Hey everyone, this is Jared, VK3BL for Retmo Radio, and today I'm just going to do a quick little sneak um, preview, sneak peek, of a device we'll be reviewing. It's the very popular um, DYC8X7 speech compressor. Um, it's very popular with QRP operators because it does add quite a bit of punch um, to their signal. Now, I've done a whole bunch of graphs showing um, you know, the, the performance of the device and it'll take a bit of editing to get that video out. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to introduce it. Um, uh, there's a few different places you can buy it. Um, the original one, uh, well, the original device that was made by funkamateur.de um, and they sell it online on their shop box73.com um, and for some reason it's now called the uh, Bravo X-Ray 8x7 dynamic compressor um, but if you google Delta Yankee Charlie 8 X-Ray 7 you will um, find the website or you can just copy it from the video the other place that sells them is Soda Beams they're a new new product to Soda Beams and um, they're sold out as well so their product actually looks a little different um, it doesn't have any of the funk amateur style labeling it doesn't have the same um, model number or anything but it does very much appear to be the exact same device so um, I'm not sure how that occurred whether there's a relationship between soda beams and uh, funk amateur or box 73 but you can get them from two places and they are sold out um, Box 73 sells them in a kit form where you have to solder on a, a couple of through hole components um, pretty much and um, soda beams will sell you a built kit so that's good for people who um, can't build their own now, as you can see it is compatible with the 857, the 897, 450, the 991 a whole bunch of radios um, but it's most interesting to people with FT817s and 818s because they don't have a built in speech compressor so that's why they're so popular and they just go in line with your microphone so I think you can actually see it better here you have your standard microphone it comes down um, plugs into the speech compressor box and that plugs into the radio and there's no batteries needed it uses 10 milliamps and it's powered by the radio so anyway, that's uh, that's the product we'll be reviewing shortly um, great product and uh, I've heard it on the air love it um, there are some caveats to its use, and I will talk about how to set it up properly so that uh, you don't overdrive your radio. But for now, I just wanted to show you one of its secondary features, which I think is really, really useful. And that's its antenna tune function. Basically, if you hold down the push to talk button and press the um, down button on your microphone, which is used for changing the VFO or um, you know clicking through your memories, it will generate a tone. Um, and then you can tune up your antenna. Now, at the moment, I've got my radio set, uh, well, the, my mic level input set, so the radio is putting out about one watt pep at full power. And I'll explain the reason for that in a second, but without much further ado, let me show you the feature. So I've got my good old um, SDR Play uh, scope here, and um, let's press the microphone. You can see the radio has come on, it's picking up a bit of my voice, and if I press the down button and hold it, So you can see there, there's a series of tones. Um, you can also note, uh, if you're paying attention, that while you're generating the tones, the microphone element isn't actually muted, so you can hear my voice there. Um, but what is interesting, and this is the reason I have my radio set so low, um, you can see a few sort of harmonics which are outside of the crystal filter. Um, they're well and truly down, uh, you know, I, I don't know the exact mass, but that'd be 60 decibels or something down, so don't, no big deal there. Um, but the interesting thing is that there is quite a few harmonics in the audio passband. Now, when I first saw this, I was a little bit sort of put off by it, because I knew immediately that that meant that if you were using an average reading power meter, such as the one built into the 817, or the one built into the uh, 818. Let me uh, stop this for you. Now it's important to let go of the down button first and then the push to talk, otherwise you might um, might change VFO frequency. So we'll do that now. Let go of the down button, you can still see it's picking up my audio and I'll let go of push to talk. 
So initially it put me off a bit because I thought, you know, with multiple tones, you need a pep reading meter to get an accurate reading. And, you know, sometimes people might look at their meter and they think, why isn't my radio putting out five watts when using this tone and, and that sort of thing. But then look, I looked at the graph and, and oh, well, I looked at the output and we'll do it again. And you can see that, you know, the secondary, um, well, the, the third and the fifth harmonic and all of that, they're all down about 15 decibels or something or more. So they're not actually contributing much of the output power. So that's not a big deal. I verified that on a pep meter. Um, when you go from, um, you know, uh, average to pep, there's a, you know, about 10% difference, shall we say. So not a big deal at all. I did, did sort of look at that and think, you know, initially look at the, um, the output and think, why, why didn't they clean that up a bit? But the fact of the matter is, it makes no difference. Um, and it may actually be helpful. If you're an owner of something like a magnetic loop antenna for 40 or 80, um, they're notoriously hard to tune. And one of the reasons for that is the passband can be 3 kilohertz or less. So having, you know, those multiple tones there that sort of take up the whole audio passband, um, you know, I, I know that they don't contribute much power, um, but it may help with tuning um, for those those style of antennas that have a really high Q. So, um, yeah, initially I was sort of thinking, what the, why, why is there some harmonics? But, you know, when you do the math and you, you, you think about uh, its intended usage, and that's to help you tune your antenna, not to measure your power output or anything, um, it's, it's really good. Um, so I really love this feature. I would, you know, for $45, if you think about it, um, the convenience of just being able to push a, push a button and get a tone um, when you're portable, um, it's worth it for that alone. But the compressor function is something else altogether, and um, I'm going to put a video together for everyone and basically show you how to get your radio set up right. Um, it is very easy to overdrive your radio with with the with these compressors. Is that a big deal? Well, you know, if you're in the noise and you turn it on and someone can hear you and they can't hear your, uh, your overdriven IMD um, because of their noise floor, it's probably not a big deal, but you can actually set them up so that you're not generating any more IMD and um, you know, any significant levels and you're still getting the full benefit of the compressor. So I'll demonstrate that in the next video and uh, I hope you enjoyed the sneak peek. Um, this is Jared, VK3 Bravo Lima, saying 73, and stay QIV for more uh, Yesu FT817 and 818 related themed videos, which show some of the little upgrades and that you can you can get for them uh, to make operating portable more fun. Um, catch you next time.